Put me, call, I'm close to the edge I'm trying not to lose my head It's like a jungle sometimes It makes me wonder how I keep it One of the most questioned accounts of the Bible is the flood of Noah's time. A century ago, liberal critics considered it one of the most far-fetched biblical myths. After the last century of archaeological digging has revealed accounts of the flood in the earliest civilizations, the Genesis account has been vindicated. This clay tablet from 2000 BC is a Sumerian list of kings and cities before the Great Flood. The first of the five cities mentioned is Eridu, Uruk, in the area of the Garden of Eden. While the last city, Shurapak, is the city of Zersidra, the Sumerian Noah. It is also similar to the antediluvian biblical account in that it lists kings who reigned for long periods of time. Then a great flood came. Following the flood, Sumerian kings ruled for a much shorter periods of time. This is the same pattern found in the Bible. Men had long lifespans before the flood and shorter lifespans after the flood. For forty days the flood kept coming on the earth, and as the waters increased, they lifted the ark high above the earth. The waters rose and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the water. This Sumerian tablet is mankind's oldest reference to the great flood. It's one of the six forerunners to the Babylonian Gilgamesh epic and predates the Gilgamesh epic by 1,000 years. On this tablet of the old Babylonian flood epic, the gods created the human race to take over the hard agricultural work in the universe. Humans were created without the fate of dying as a result of old age. The god Enlil then got all the gods to swear to cooperate in exterminating the whole human race because he was annoyed by the noise created by humanity. But this failed because another god got his favorite human the old Babylonian Noah, to build an ark and to save the human race and the animals. The Gilgamesh epic speaks of an ark, animals taken on the ark, birds sent out during the course of the flood, the ark landing on a mountain, and a sacrifice offered after the ark landed. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark, and he sent a wind over the earth, and the waters receded. Now the springs of the deep and the floodgates of the heavens had been closed, and the rain had stopped falling from the sky. The water receded steadily from the earth. At the end of the hundred and fifty days the water had gone down, and on the seventeenth day of the seventh month the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. Now I'm sure the skeptics claim that the Bible account is just derivative of the Sumerian account and the Gilgamesh epic, which predate the Genesis account. I contend the Sumerian and Babylonian accounts are merely derivative of the oral account handed down by Noah. Now the Biblical account was delivered directly from God to Moses, as I believe there should be evidence that the Genesis version is more plausible than the Babylonian or Sumerian. There is plenty of evidence that the Genesis account is the accurate one. Professor Gleason Archer notes that the differences between the Gilgamesh and the Genesis narratives are too great to allow one to have been borrowed from the other. Quote, The stark contrast between the passion-driven, quarrelsome, greedy gods of the Babylonian pantheon and the majestic holiness of Jehovah is most striking and significant. He writes, Likewise, the utter implausibility of a cube-shaped ark and an of the entire world by a mere 14-day downpour 
which is in the Gilgamesh epic, stand in opposition to the seaworthy dimensions and gradual sinking of the waters in the biblical record. Clearly, the Gilgamesh epic shows evidence of corruption. We can put our confidence in the biblical account because of the Ark. For instance, a scale model of the Ark was tested in a special tank at Scripps Institute in Oceanography at La Jolla, California. The tank was capable of generating giant waves with respect to the model boat, thus simulating severe sea conditions. The waves were much larger than would be experienced in the ocean. The Ark proved impossible to capsize. Due to the rectangular shape, it proved capable of riding itself, even to 90 degrees. It clearly rises above the Sumerian and Babylonian accounts, which certainly refer to the same event but have been contaminated through many centuries of oral tradition. These ancient tablets are by no means the only external corroboration of the biblical flood narrative. An enterprising historian, Aaron Smith, is said to have patiently tallied all the flood stories he could find. He came across 80,000 works in 72 different languages about the Great Flood. <laughs> 